Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the revised GRE, the second edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. Make sure it is the second edition that you buy. The problem that we are about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 121. Please turn to page 121 and today is our lesson number 204. Very first problem on page 121. The problem is already on the blackboard. It says which of the following which of the following numbers have a product between negative 1 and 0? Between negative 1 and 0. Out of these four numbers here, negative 20, negative 10, 2 raised to negative 4 and 3 raised to negative 2. The very first thing we need to do before we, before we worry about anything else is to make sure that we understand what these figures are. 2 raised to negative 4, 2 raised to negative 4 is same as 1 over 2 raised to positive 4. I hope you know that. Which of course is same as 1 over 16 because 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8 and 8 times 2 is 16. Similarly, similarly 3 raised to negative 2 is same as 1 over 3 raised to 2 which of course is same as 1 9 we have to keep that in mind now the key here is to make sure that you go systematically if you go all over the place you're going to lose track of the things and it will, it will end up actually taking you more time people think that they just try to do trial and error they will save some time actually sometimes it ends up taking you longer than it needs to be so go systematically here there are four numbers here a b C and D and we're looking for their product, product of two of these numbers such that it falls between negative 1 and 0 which is exactly what we're going to do here, we're going to go systematically let's start with A times B A times B A is a negative number, B is a negative number therefore A times B is going to be a positive number A times B is going to be a positive number, we need to stay between negative 1 and 0 so obviously it's not A times B to say nothing, to say nothing of the fact that negative 20 times negative 10, not only it's going to be positive, but it's going to be 200 is way out of the range. Let's try A times C. A times C. A times C is going to give us our A is negative 20, our A is negative 20, and our C is 1 16th. 1 16th. which is same as negative 20 over 16, which is same as negative 5 over 4, which is less than negative 1, which is less than negative 1. We need to fall between negative 1 and 0, so let's start that. Let's try A times D. A times C did not work. A times D is going to give us negative 20 times D, which is 1 over 9, which is negative 20 over 9. Now negative 18 over 9 negative 18 over 9 would have been negative 2 which is already outside our, our range. We're looking for something that falls between negative 1 and 0. This is more than negative 2. This is less than negative 2. This, this is not going to work. We're looking for something that's negative 1 and 0. So we're done with A. Let's try B times C. B times C. B is negative 10 and C is 1 over 16 which is same as negative 10 over negative 16, which is negative 5, 8. Negative 5, 8 does the job. Negative 5, 8, I hope you are able to see right away that it falls between negative 1 and 0. Or can I show you that it falls between negative 1 and 0? Uh, I shouldn't have used up. Since we already know that 2 raised to negative 4 is 1, 16 and 3 raised to negative 2 is 1, 9, we no longer need it. Let me erase that thing so I have the room. If you have trouble, if you have trouble seeing where the negative 5, 8 falls in, in, in reference to, in relation to negative 1 and 0, just plot it out. It doesn't take that long. Just plot it out. Here is our, here is our 0, here is our negative 1, here is our half. And half, a negative half that is, half, because we are on the left of the, we are, we are to the left of the 0, and half, of course, is same as 4, 8. We have to convert everything into the 8 so that we can see. Here is our negative one quarter. Negative one quarter is going to be closer to zero than negative one half because it's a negative number, which of course is same as negative 
2 8 negative 2 8 and here is our negative 3 quarter negative 3 quarter of course the same as negative 6 8 because you are converting everything into into 8 so now we have it we have negative 5 8 negative 5 8 is going to fall between between 6 8 and 4 8 it's going to fall right here voila as you can clearly see it falls in the range that we are looking for between 0 and negative 1 that is our answer B and C so in the, in the exam, you will have to check mark both B and C. Make sure you check mark all the answer choices. These are new type of questions that did not exist up until a year ago, but in a new GRE, which is what they call in the revised GRE, they have introduced these new types of questions where more than one more than one answer choice applies, and you will not get credit for the problem unless you check mark every one of them. Some of the problems will have as many as ten answer choices. Yes, ten answer choices. If you turn the pages, if you turn the page. If you go to, if you look at page 123 very quickly, you will see that on page 123, we have 10 answer choices all the way from 0 to 9. And our job is to check mark every single answer choice that works with the problem. And if there are four right answers, and if you mark only three of them, you are not going to get three quarter of the credit. You will waste your time. You will have wasted your time doing all the work in locating the three of the answer choices. But if you fail, or if you located all four of them, but if you fail to mark the fourth one. You won't get credit for it. Be careful. So that's it. We, that's our answer, B and C. The rest of the stuff we don't have to do if you don't want to, but quickly just to satisfy our curiosity. This is for learning purposes. As far as the exam is concerned, we are done. But just for learning purposes, let's quickly take a look at the others. So we're done with BC. Let's take a look at BD. BD is going to be negative 10 times negative. BD is going to be negative 10 times 1 9, which is going to be negative 10 over 9 which is less than negative 1, it's going to fall outside the range. 10 over 9 is, is, is 10 over 9 actually is more than 1 because, but it, because it has a negative sign which means it is less than negative 1. And finally, if you are interested we can do the last part, so we did B times D, B times D and finally we have to do C times D. And there is no point in doing C times D, why? Because C times D, C is a positive number, D is a positive number, C times D is going to be a positive number, it's going to be something more than 0. There is no point in doing that. Uh, 116 over 19, whatever that fraction is, doesn't matter what the fraction is, it's a positive number, which is going to go outside zero. We, we can't go, we can go outside that. This, this, this area is not allowed. This area is not allowed. We're only going to stay, we're only going to stay from here to here, which is the reason why we did not bother with A times B, because A times B, A times B was also positive times positive, which was more than zero. That's it, we're done with this problem. Let's look on, let's look at the second problem. This one is done. Problem number two. Problem number two is a very straightforward question actually. Problem number two on page one, 121 is the exact same problem Problem number two that you see on page 121 is the exact same problem that appeared in the first edition of the book. The vast majority of the problem that you see in the second editions are reproduced exactly the way they were in first edition. Not only the problems are the same, but they haven't even bothered to change the page numbers. In most cases, even the page numbers are the same. Because I have already done all the math problem in the first edition of the, of the book here, I have done on my channel, you will find 200 videos on first edition, there's about 48 hours worth of instructions. I'm not going to read all of those questions, I'm going to simply tell you which video to watch if you're interested in watching the solutions to a given problem. Problem number two, if you want to watch the solution, just type in, this is the tag that you want to type in, just type in revised, revised GRE, revised GRE math, just type in that part, revised GRE math and then the day number whichever day number that I tell you. So day 14 will give you the problem number 2. On the following page, problem number 3, let's see if that's a new problem or if it's an old problem. Oh geez, yes, problem number 3, that's a nasty one, that's a bugger. That one, you see what you will find as you start, as you, as you begin to watch my videos on a regular basis, what you will find is that we do not stand here for the purpose of, the, for the mere sake of solving the problems so for, for the mere sake of solving problems after problems after problems, that's not what I'm here for. 
we're not here I'm not here to show you that I can solve the problem we want to understand it we want to we want to understand it we want to grasp it we want to be at ease with it there is a difference between somebody simply solving a problem to you in, uh, in front of you one after the other and actually teaching exactly what is going behind it in other words we sink our teeth into it I took two days to solve problem number three I took two days to solve problem number three because they give you some explanation in the book there and they tell you that if this is a scenario then this is a, this is going to be a ratio and if this is a scenario for example at the very last line they tell you that the respective weights are seven and three if you read the very last line very last line on page 122 it tells you blah 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 and then it tells you the respective weights are going to be seven and three and people person who is reading and the person who doesn't know what's going on there they're going to sit there and say what the hell where did they come from it just fell from the sky which is what I explained in the video. So where these where these respective weights are coming from? Do you understand? And I spent two days on it. Problem number three. Problem number three, page one twenty-two. Day fifteen. Day fifteen and sixteen. And finally, problem number four. On the same page, page 122, no, not on the same page, sorry, page 123, day number 17. The reason I say finally is because that's the end of that topic, and then on the following page they're going to start something else. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to break it up in sequence in a logical fashion where it seems rational to break it, and I will assign three co few questions every day three, four, maybe five questions every day and make sure you do the assignment, make sure you do all the problems that I assign on a given day before you go to the next step. So do not go to day number 205 until you have done all the work that is there. Watch day number 14. Make sure you solve these problems first ahead of time yourself. It, or even if you have trouble solving them, do it. try to do them anyway. You will learn more by having tried them first than simply watching somebody else solve the problem for the very first time. Solve the problem first so that, so that you have the acquaintance with the problem, so that you understand what's going on in the problem, and then work with me on the same problem and see what happens. So make sure you watch all of these, uh, solve all of these problems first, and then watch the videos 14, 15, 16, 17, before you go to day number 205. And each day I'm going to assign you, as I said, few problems, anywhere from 3 to 5. Okay? I'll see you tomorrow. Bye now.